And the first thing we've got to talk about today, Sean, because otherwise I'll get it in the neck and so will you for not nudging me and reminding me. Yes, everybody, I know it, this thing here is still using Windows 7. And the useful guys at work, thanks for doing this, chaps, have assured me that the moment this filming session is finished, if I bring this in, they will upgrade that one to Windows 10 as well. We've been talking about regular expressions, basically about the theory of them and the idea of them, but we've not actually seen them in practice. Yeah. Regex, Regex, REs, they are a very good illustration of where theory can meet practice. But I think in the previous one, we did a little bit of theory. But what we ought to do now is just see them in action, I think. It's a difficult one for me to tackle, is this? I think you'll all... I, I'm just trying to get sympathy here. The span of what you either know or don't know, you, the audience, is huge on this topic. Some of you know way more than I do. Some of you really are beginners and struggling to get used to the somewhat abstract notation and so on. So apologies up front, but this one will seem very simple and very straightforward to those of you who have got some expertise. But I think it's important that we regroup and say, look, this is the notation. We all agree on this because I have for the future got a very good example lined up of something where regular expressions, if you like, can only just cope. I am doing my examples here in Lex because I hope that some of these examples later on will transfer into being part of a little compiler of some sort and it's software I'm used to. But it's very straightforward. You give a piece of regular expression for a pattern you want to match and then you give, if you like, an action that you want to take. Now very often, having recognised a piece of regular expression, all you want to do is to echo it back, perhaps with a bit of explanation as to what it means. So here's my simple exercise. I'm going to declare about seven reserved words in my language. But my language is going to ultimately end up as being an elementary computer graphics language, just like Brian Kernighan's pick. So my reserved words will be things like circus, circus, <laughs> Circle. In fact, I shall put in both circle and circus to see if it can distinguish between the two. Line, arc, spline, box, that sort of thing. I want those to be picked up as being reserved words. But then, if it isn't a reserved word in my scheme and it's some other bunch of characters, is it a bunch of characters that would do good service as being a variable name? And as, as I think we've said many a time, variable names in many languages follow the pattern that they must begin with a letter, but then after that they can have any mix of upper, lowercase letters and digits in the name, zero or more of them, that's your variable name. So reserved words and name variables of that type, of that particular reserved word type. That's all we're going to do today. I have here a Lex script which has got seven specific lines in for recognizing circle, line, arrow, spline, box, arc, or bonus at the bottom, circus. Both start C I R C. So when you look at it, it's, e it's either going to match that or that or that or that or that, the reserved words. If it won't match any of those, it keeps coming down, trying to match, trying to use the next regular expression to get a match. And below here, I just give zero to nine, it says in square brackets plus. And that's a piece of regular expression notation that says any combination of digits naught to nine in any order going on arbitrarily long. For the moment here, those A to Z or A to Z choices, it means anything in that range. Um, literally those characters in however many combinations are possible. So I've put all this together. I fed it into Lex. I compiled it all up for you. I won't bore you by doing it in front of you. But believe me, I have saved this as a binary executable. It's called test re for test regular expression, but it only handles these regular expressions. I think we're all ready to go. I just type in the name of the executable binary, test re. Let's see if it works. Right. 
silence signifies I'm happy. Yes, it's waiting. So go on, tell me something to, to try out, Sean. Let's use the name Bob. Bob. You just want Bob all on its own. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bob. Bob. Bob, okay. What will Bob do? Would you agree with that? Bob is a variable name. In other words, it's a valid identifier for a variable of some sort. Fine, yes, there's nothing to stop you calling your integers or your circles or your lines. You can call them Bob if you want to, that's fine. Um, since I'm saying that this thing as advertised really does treat words like circle and line as being special, let's see if it filters those out and gets it right. So I'll just say circle on its own, lowercase. Look at that. As part of my pattern matching, circle is one of my entries in reserved words that must be recognised just as is. Lowercase notice. And it's worked. It basically says, yeah, got you, circle. It's a reserved word. And just to emphasise, I've got it. It's circle, right? Now this time, I'm spelling it with a capital C. And my guess, my hope, is that it will rec recognise the first circle as being a reserved word. The second circle can't be a reserved word because it's case sensitive, right? It's a uh, circle all lowercase has been reserved, but the version with an uppercase C isn't. So therefore, who knows? It should be a variable. Let's see if that works. Yeah, circle all lowercase is reserved. Echo it back just to be sure. Yeah, I got it. It's circle. But circle is a variable name, which I think sounds right. Think of something else that might break it, Sean. Go on. Well, we talked earlier and you kind of said the, the idea of putting the word circus in there to throw it because it's yes. so similar. Yes, that's a good point. Let's just try circus. It's happy with that. I did make it a reserved word, but it hasn't sort of come up with, ooh, I can't decide between circle and circus. Part of what I was saying in uh, the episode last time is that one of Lex's jobs is to say, despite the fact that circle and circus have a common beginning, I'm very clever and I can very efficiently factorise that beginning out and then say, well, after that, if it ends L-E, it's a reserved word. If it ends US, it's also a reserved word, but it's happy. So a good thing to do now, I think, uh, would be, can you name a circus? Yeah. Better still, perhaps, how about this? I want to name another circus, but I'm going to call it Circus One. Now that should be no problem, because it's not saying circus, circus, it's saying circus, reserved word of that category. Circus one can only be a variable name. So it's using the space to delineate. Between. Yes, the way I've got it set up at the moment is I haven't told it to ignore spaces yet. I've left them in because it, ha it serves in the way I've got it at the moment as a very handy break between these various things, which can then be analysed separately. This then is, if you like, aligning with the history of Lex and regular expressions, is that Mike Lesk put them in this front end to enable you to do reserved words, variables, all sorts of things like that. But <clears throat> historically, they then migrated out into things that have nothing to do with compilers. Many of you will have heard of Unix Orc, and that was the great granddaddy of all sorts of things that you're more familiar with, like Perl, PHP, Python, and so on. Orc's characteristic was it just did regex pattern matches, then actions. There was no context. It was interpretive. Orc, you gave it the thing to do, it comes straight back at you. You didn't have to recompile it every time. So here's the first beginnings of what we need for our longer example. We've got the ability to take uh, a, a choice of characters in any combination, zero or more of, to name variables. Fixed sets of characters of certain variety like circle, line, box are dealt with first. So I think the thing to take away from this is that in programs like Orc and Lex, you've got to remember that the various possibilities you give will be done in that order. It's 
you've got to imagine that between the lines there's almost an or operation. You start up at the top, you say, it will either ma match circle, or it will match box, or it will match line, or it will match spline, or it will match arrow. And so it goes on, and then down at the bottom the catch-all is, and if it doesn't match any of those, let's just see if it could be a legal variable. And then you just run out, and I have to accept that if you put in a line of punctuation, I think it would just echo it back at me and not do anything with it. Let's just see. Quote, pounds, dollar, it just echoes back, it takes no action. It just says, Meh, I don't know what that is. I think that this has set us up now, I hope, into being able to do a longer example than this. But... To me at least, regular expressions come into their own for this kind of thing. One-liners, to name things, you know, match a pattern, do that with it, all over, one line. They're not all that well suited to doing very long-range, big, strategic structure. So uh, many of you have said to me, oh, cover Y. Reg X's can't do XML properly. Well, I might get onto that, but yes. You, you all know XML's got big tree-like structure. Reg X's do not of themselves find it easy to do though. Can I ask one question? If you had a real circus, what would it be called? Would it be like the great Braille's Fordini? Wasn't there a Circus Maximus in Rome? There was, wasn't there? There we go. I just think it needs a bit more of a showman's title than... than oh, Barnum Ford. and Bailey. Is that right? Yeah. Do, you want, do you want me to try Barnum and Bailey? <laughs>